So hi, hello everyone again and welcome again to another Saturday microscopy live stream uh, micro hunter here and uh, today uh, we'll be looking at uh, yeah a couple of those uh, prepared slides uh, which I bought uh, and uh, I've uh, seen in the chat uh, already that some of you apparently already know the set um, I do not know them I did not unpack them yet and I thought it's gonna be a fun activity to yeah, look at them together and uh, to compare um, a little bit how they actually look like um, and whether they're worth the money. Um, why did I choose those slides? I chose them because for one simple reason, they were pretty cheap. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, I paid only about uh, 12 euros for 48 slides. Um, and uh, I've seen that on Amazon.com, it's they sell around for around nine US dollars. Um, yeah, it's not a sponsored video or anything. Um, I bought them myself. Um, I don't know how they are and we're just gonna look at them together and uh, then we're gonna see. Yeah, um, I did also put some affiliate links into the description if, you, um, if you're interested in those, but we're gonna see, okay? Um, yeah, um, so I've seen that some of you are already starting um, uh, to post um, and if you are new to this uh, live stream and to this channel, then uh, um, of course a big uh, welcome from myself and uh, the basic rules are as follows. Um, not rules really, but uh, it would kind of help me a little bit is if you have a question uh, that you would like to ask me directly over the chat, maybe you can put an at sign at, at microbe hunter. So then I'm simply going to skip over all of the other comments and I, I can directly read um, the question which is directly posted to me. Um, and I hope that I'm able to answer it, <laughs> okay? Uh, but it's it's kind of nice when people talk and chat a lot uh, over the chat, but this kind of makes it more difficult for me um, to, to kind of find the questions which are directly for me. Um, and uh, therefore, please put an at micro at the beginning and then I know that it's uh, for me. Um, yeah, um, it's been a, a tradition always uh, to, um, yeah, oh, before I say that, um, if you have any off-topic questions that are microscopy related, um, that's also fine. Um, I will uh, simply uh, try to briefly answer them as well, as long as they're microscopy related, okay? So yeah, um, for the first couple of minutes, uh, greetings from all around, all around the world, okay? Somebody already seems to have those, okay? Um, yeah, uh, best greetings uh, in Northern Germany, uh, from Northern Germany, from Lower Austria again, okay? Um, yeah, where you can cook an egg on the streets, yes, uh, just like in many other places in, in Europe, uh, we're having a heat wave here, okay? Um, yeah, and the sound is okay, that's also very good to know. What is a cheap brand new microscope to buy? Hmm, <laughs> that's, uh, that's difficult to say. Um, the cheapest microscopes they go for around a hundred uh, euros or US dollars but it's always a question are you going to be happy with it or not yeah. so this is a very difficult to qu uh, question to answer okay so uh, what I'm going to do now um, yeah hello from Massachusetts from Hungary from Brazil okay and uh, yeah from the way hello from west coast in the United States the hello from Mexico hello from the Netherlands from Berlin in Germany um, yeah very nice uh, my brother got me an amp scope, yeah. I'm surprised uh, how well it works. Okay, so yes, um, we're gonna get started. Hello, uh, greetings from Argentina. So I'm going to do the following. Um, I'm going to start unpacking it. And honestly, I don't know what expect, what I have to expect, okay? So um, I'm going to um, open it up. I, I really, I had to really restrain myself. I was really curious when, I, when it arrived a few days ago. Um, but I said, no, I'm not going to open it. I'm going to do this together with you folks so that essentially yeah, the tension and the surprise factor is a little bit higher. So what does it say here? Ah, made in China. <laughs> of course, where else? But that's fine. Um, as long as the quality is fine. It says a professional type. Uh, selected fine specimens from various categories. Colored labels enable an easy classification. Well, actually, yeah. Actually, it's supposed to be identification, but who cares? Let's not be too <laughs> detailed about it. Yeah, they are, are color coded. So they are the yellow ones and the red. I don't know what this is. Yeah, honeybee legs. So these seem to be some 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 animals here. This here, the yellow is plants, animals. What what is blue? Sheep hair, cat hair, cow hair. I, I'm able to see. Okay, also animals. And this one over here is cabbage leaf, also plants. 
fiber, corn pollen. Okay, well, we're gonna see. Um, I think the first thing that I already noted is, is that they do not seem to have a cover glass. So I think they might be actually, um, they might have some plastic foil over it, but we're gonna, we're gonna find out, okay? Um, yeah, uh, so, um, yeah, um, there are lots of comments. I, I really love it uh, when there are so many questions. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm just, uh, one point already from source of origin. Minus one point already from source of origin. Ah, okay. <laughs> well, uh, uh, because maybe, maybe because they're from China. Well, um, honestly, if you want to have quality slides, um, I have quality slides also made in Germany, um, or at least they think it's a, they're made in Germany from a German company, uh, but they're much more expensive, but they're also used for medical training. So um, we're gonna see uh, how good they actually are. So I'm going to open it carefully and, and I, don't, I wonder how this actually works. How am I supposed to, oh, okay, let's, let's open, let's have it. Okay, uh, maybe I'm gonna go down a little bit with the camera. Okay. Um, and uh, I don't know, 48 slides. I don't know if you have time to look at all of them. Um, but let's take out the, the, the first one here. They're light. Oh my gosh, they're made of plastic. Okay. These are plastic slides. Okay, I'm already a little bit worried because uh, when they are made of plastic, then this basically means uh, I've got polarization, polarized light. I've got DIC and plastic might interfere with polarized light. So I think we're just gonna look at it at bright field. Uh, yeah, of course, for children suitable. And uh, yeah, it's nicely labeled, obviously here. And then here is the specimen. And if you, yeah, and I don't know how good it is and, and we're just gonna get started, okay? <laughs> no DIC for these. Well, I'm gonna try DIC. I don't know how, it uh, how the polarized light works with this. And we're just gonna work ourselves through with those uh, yeah, uh, slides here. Um, and uh, yeah, let's uh, switch over to the microscope view. I need to turn on the light here. So this is now bright field, um, the four times. I I'm already wondering, does, can I even fit it in here? Ah, oh, is it, does it work? Am I able to place it? Ah, look, <laughs> I can't even properly fit it in here because uh, of the small size. Yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, kind of difficult to move around. Okay, okay, what is this? What does it say? Uh, pine, pine, just a second. Pine tree stem. Okay, uh, hmm. pine tree stem. Oh, it's, that's already interesting here and how it's prepared. Okay, well, what we see is the following. Um, hmm. So I'm kind of wondering how we're gonna do that. Uh, I'm going to take now another slide a, a, a regular glass slide. Okay, um, and I'm, this is clean enough. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to put the glass slide in here and I'm gonna put this slide here on top. So that at least, uh, so that I can at least uh, move it around properly. Otherwise I'm not even able to move it around because of the small size. I suppose it's a little bit unexpected. And this is now the cross section of, of a plant. Okay, hmm. So an interesting thing what I already see is, is the following, um, and which is okay. I've seen this also in some other more expensive commercial slides. Is, uh, where can I have this? Just here's the arrow. You, you see that the whole thing here is, is embedded in the square here. So this seems to be some kind of a resin or something uh, where the stem or the specimen was embedded and then it was, uh, afterwards it was microtomed. Yeah, um, so this, uh, yeah, seems to be some kind of a, a, a yeah, a resin medium and then the whole thing uh, was taped uh, using some plastic foil mm -hmm. okay so that's going to be interesting uh, we can see some bubbles uh, from the from the from the plastic let's go up with the magnification a little bit mm -hmm. yeah I mean hmm okay the plastic does disturb a little bit because what we have is we have uh, those bubbles here. Yeah. Um, of course, you also have uh, can have bubbles if you just use regular mounting medium and so on. But honestly, hmm. Yeah, it's just the first one. So this is uh, this is how it looks like. Let me yeah close the 
if I close the condenser, then I'm able to see that it is indeed a little bit blurry. Hmm. The quality, of course, cannot be quite as good as, as with uh, when you're using a proper cover glass. But I, I'm not able to see the individual cells very well. Normally, when you have a cross section of a stem, you are able to see the individual cells. But this is not quite well possible here. Hmm. At least it is stained. Uh, it might be. Ah, uh, here, here we can see some cells. Here. If you want to, I can show you some some slides, some some other uh, commercial slides. Okay. Um, yeah. This, this is a, this is a, yeah quite uh, yeah um, uh, quite fascinating. Um, I have to uh, see a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is uh, occasionally I'm just gonna uh, skip down. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to now try to switch on DIC. It means I'm gonna put in the DIC here um, and uh, let's see if this has any effect. Uh, not okay. Not not such a big effect. Of course, the background color changes, but this somehow does not seem to have significant impact here. So we're just going to leave it as bright, bright field. Yeah. So the plastic foil does seem to take a little bit of quality away. So you know what? Um, I'm just going to go on uh, with the next one. So and uh, I mean again, uh, these were quite cheap. Um, so these are the petals of a plant. Okay, Chris, okay, you know, Chris, uh, I'm, I'm going to show you the chrysan, chrysanthemum. This is basically a flower. Okay, um, so let's have a look at this one here. Hmm, okay. Um, yeah, um, of course, this is uh, when you put a, a complete uh, leaf, of course, under on the slide and because of its thickness of course you're not able to see a lot that's what we seem to have here as well let's go up with the brightness yeah and that's uh, the petal of a flower um, let's go up a little bit here with the magnification of course uh, if it is not properly microtomed then it's actually too thick to see a lot Hmm, okay. Let's see, is there some dirt or so included? No, these seem to be, these are plant here. That's fine. Yeah. Okay, hmm, okay, well that's uh, a little bit what we would, uh, what you would expect if you take a complete, yeah, there seem to be also, you can see the surface texture a little bit. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm just gonna go through a little bit quicker now. Um, maybe I'm going to spend a little bit more time um, yeah, sycamore fluff this is the next one. The sycamore fluff. This, let's see. Ah, yeah. Look, this already looks looks nice. I think that, that that's okay. Let me see if. Uh, ah, yeah. You can see again here. There are um, of course some some bubbles, but otherwise the specimen itself. Seems to be okay. Um, this is, um, I would say, a little bit like a so-called a dry-mounted slide. Um, basically, the the fluff, uh, the specimen itself, is surrounded by air, yeah. and uh, this is what you call dry mount. A dry mount, yeah. which is, yeah. I mean, I guess uh, um, for demonstration purposes. If you want to have a lot of things to look at, why not? And if your demands are not too high. Yeah, but this seems to be still fairly okay. Every now and then I'm going to interrupt myself. I'm going to read a little bit, a couple of the questions here. Um, yeah, here this next comment. A lot of prepared slides from China may not allow 100 times objective application due to the high thickness of the cover slip. Uh, many hundred times objectives have very short working distances. Beware. Yes, uh, basically it is like this: that if you want to use a hundred times oil immersion objective, you have to put a, an immersion oil on the the slide, 
and especially if now they use a lot of mounting medium then of course uh, you might crash your objective into the the cover glass having said that um i've never um used i've never used uh, mounting medium on uh, permanent slides anyway um, because uh, they, they contaminate the slide and you have all of the oil over the, the slide. So I don't like using uh, immersion oil anyway on permanent slides. So I've not uh, tried this uh, yeah, at all. Um, here, yeah, um, it, I, I would say that um, also the, um, the fact that there is uh, this plastic um, on top of it might also degrade the quality, of course. Yeah. So I'm going to go down again. Um, yeah. At Micro Hunter and everyone, has anyone heard of uh, Konus? It's a brand that sells prepared slides. Okay, I've, I think I've heard, the, the name does ring a bell, but I don't know very much about that. Yeah? Very often what happens is, is, is that uh, companies um, basically will start to import slides and or microscopes or products generally, and uh, then those uh, products are rebranded and then resold. So theoretically what I could do is I could also um, kind of import my, my slides from wherever, maybe mostly China maybe, uh, slap a, a label on it and then resell it. I could do that, um, that's not what I'm interested in doing, but that is a possibility. Uh, but this is actually what many companies are doing. Pineapple here, pineapple here, that's the next one. Okay, so let's have a look. Um, let's always go down a little bit with the magnification here. Yeah, so that is, these are supposed to be pineapple here. Okay. Yeah, again here, um, all of these uh, geometrical shapes, these are, these are, how do you say, these are the bubbles of, 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 of the tape. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's pineapple. I don't know exactly what they mean with pineapple here. Um, these definitely seem to be um, obviously cells. It seems to be a stained specimen, that's, that's fine. Okay. Um, if you want to make sense of um, of the things that you see, then of course uh, knowing a little bit more about it would be kind of nice. Let's go up a little more, but it's, I think this is also okay. It also looks uh, fairly okay, I would say. Yeah. So. Um, some of the samples, that's another question, some of the samples in the prepared slides might not align with the description of the slides. Ah, okay, yes. So basically, um, that, that's another thing that you have uh, I've seen uh, occasionally. No, I cannot talk about slides, but other things, um, uh, a butterfly collection that I've seen, it was completely mislabeled. They just slapped on, on any description that sounded scientific and it really did not match. Yeah. So this is of course something one has always uh, has to be aware. Yeah, so let's uh, take on the next one. The next one is a sunflower pollen. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's kind of fascinating. Maybe later on I want to also have a look at a couple of, of, of um, um, animal tissues. I always go down with the pollen. Now pollen seems to be a challenge because pollen are, are small. Ah, here we go. Okay, so here we got the pollen. Pollen is an, is an interesting thing because uh, uh, pollen, um, the, the appearance of pollen can change dramatically depending on the surrounding mounting medium. So if you, for example, have a water-based mounting medium, then the pollen will absorb the moisture and they will start to swell. Um, here right now, they seem to be surrounded of, obviously by air because they taped it, or, yeah, they put the tape over it. So the pollen itself is surrounded by air. And again, they seem to have been stained, which is okay. I just would like to know which stain that they use. So, yeah, but you can see the spikes of, of the pollen as well. So let's just switch in over to DIC just for the fun of it. Yeah, but we do not see a lot of a huge difference. Yeah. And I'm a little bit, uh, see, uh, when I bend over the, to the microscope, then you're not, not able to see my face properly. So I have to be a little bit careful here. Yeah, yeah I think we're just going to stay with Brightfield because that would be also the way that most of you are going to see it. I, I could, yeah, have a look here. Yeah. Okay, so that's a sunflower pollen. We can see the spikes, but again, the, yeah. 
Hmm. The quality is, is mostly, I would say, or to a significant uh, part, of course, uh, reduced uh, by the fact that they did not put in a proper cover glass because the microscope objectives are optimized for certain cover glass thickness. So, again, pollen, camellia pollen, it's called camellia. I don't know that plant, so maybe you can find out a little bit more about it. So let's always go down a little bit with the magnification and uh, again, light intensity, I have to now find it because I don't know where it is. It's a little bit out of focus as well. Here we go again. Okay, here are camellia pollen. Turn up the light. Yeah, I'm 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 absolutely certain that they have somehow stained it. Yes, yeah, a little a description wouldn't uh, wouldn't hurt um, on on the process that they used. Yeah. The thing is 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 always um yeah. Um, how how long term resist not resistant but how long can you store those slides um, if the specimen itself uh, is not properly embedded in mounting medium so in other words is there any possibility for example for moisture reaching the specimen yeah. so this might be um, maybe not so easily because uh, because it's taped uh, all around it so but you never know yeah because sometimes uh, the glue can also um, you know change its consistency a little bit over the time yeah? lava what is lava labor so let's have a look at this plant here it's, it's kind of interesting still I mean um, you always have to see everything in in connection to the price so what is this ah this seems to be also um, a specimen that somehow has been embedded in some kind of a a medium so and is this part of the is this part of the yeah these must be the cells right or was it some kind of an artifact what is what's going on here it seems to be folded back on itself somehow I don't really know, I guess so, okay, I guess these must be the cells, yep, sure they are, lava, oh, I know what this looks like, ah, uh, yes, I, uh, lava, okay, these are algae, uh, they, they, they belong to the red algae, and um, in uh, Japanese and in Korean food, they have the omaki, uh, and the, it's the black, the black um, algae that they use to to wrap uh, the maki, those uh, rice rolls, right? That's called that's the that's called laver or laver, the the the, the black um, algae, uh, and they belong to the red algae, and uh, that's basically what it is. I, I now recall because a couple of years ago I put it also under the microscope, and that's uh, how it looked like. Okay, so that is uh, basically the the um, the black. Uh, thin paper-like algae that uh, you can get in Japanese and Korean restaurants when you eat those rice rolls. It's this black thing, yeah? Uh, they belong to the, to the red algae and they are grown obviously in large quantities and that's why it's kind of folded back on itself because it's so thin. Yeah. Ah, yeah. So um, I remember that uh, when I put it uh, under the microscope, I had a very, it looked very similar. Yeah, so the quality is, is, is quite similar here. So I'm, I'm going to go down again. So far, I don't see any questions to me. That's quite a bit of, uh, yeah, here is another one. How do you know that is it, it's a dry mound slide, but just looking at it? Well, um, the thing is the following. Um, when, for example, the the specimen, like for example, the fluff and so on, is on here, um, then it's directly taped. Uh, basically, uh, it was placed on the slide and they simply put the tape over it. So it is surrounded by so it's surrounded by air, yeah. And then it's called a dry mount. Um, and there are some things here that I've seen um, that essentially were kind of embedded in this resin-like substance, which I don't know what it is. So strictly speaking, that is not a dry mount, okay? 
uh, but if you just take the object and put it on the slide and you do not add any liquid but just put the tape over it then it's referred to as, as a dry mount and the fact that there are no cover glasses on top with a mounting medium is already a very strong sign that um, essentially many of the slides are um, actually dry mounts yeah? because uh, yeah I'll just show you uh, this one over here again I'm gonna show you the desk yeah I don't know if you're able to see this properly yeah um, but uh, they put the, the specimen on, on here yeah, and they simply put the tape over it and, and, and that means the specimen itself is in a little bubble okay ear bubble and that's why it's referred to as a dry mount so, um, uh, I mean, if, if I continue at that speed, then I'm not never able to, to reach the other, uh, the other specimens, okay? Uh, dandelion fuzz, what's the fuzz? Uh, are you talking about the, ah, uh, yeah, the, that's the shoot of the dandelion seed. Uh, that's a very common one I've, uh, that I've looked also quite a lot under the microscope. And here, let me put again the microscope view here, down with the light. Yeah. Yeah, here it is. Yeah, we all know that. Yeah. That here seems to be uh, the. Is this part of the seed or what? Yeah. Um, in any case. Yeah. Where it's carried away, and you can actually see over here. Um, um, yeah, that. Uh, yeah, the tape. Kind of simply holds it down, yeah. yeah so it's it's uh, surrounded uh, by ear bubbles, and if you place it into water or into other mounting medium, then the re difference in refract the refract the difference in refractive index is not so great, um, and you might actually see some uh, some details um, more clearly. Yeah. Okay, I go down again. Uh, maybe stained with eosin, that's a very common stain, um, so that's quite well possible. There are a couple of stains that are quite common, eosin for example, methylene blue I like to use, safranin um, is also a red stain, yet red yellow, yellowish stain, so there are a variety of, of, of possibilities uh, that there are, okay. You know what I'm going to do, um, of course later on we can look at more, but I would like to move on a little bit and I would like to also have a look at some of the, the animal tissues, okay. So this means that uh, I'm going to quickly um, yeah, um, open up the other one as well while I read here. Sunflower pollen may be stained with eosin, yes, that's possible. Yeah. So th let's have a look at this one here. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to open. I mean, if you want to make sure that you always store it away safely and you might make it a little bit more accessible. Okay, so that's the blue box. What do we have here? Okay, animals, sheep hair, the fur of a sheep, okay. Cat hair, rabbit hair, fowl feather. Okay, so here we have all of the animal fur. Goldfish scale. Okay, I mean I can imagine that for, for kids essentially who would like to look at a variety of different things this might be might be fine, but uh, let's have a look here. Um, again I have to switch over to the microscope. Okay, so that is what, uh, that's a sheep here now, she uh, wool in other words. That's wool. Hmm. Okay, yup. That's a little bit what I expected. Yeah, very typical of of um, of uh, ear mounted or dry mounted specimens. Just I can explain this here a little bit uh, better. I mean, it all seems to have been stained. Just want to show you a little bit one of the things that um, is uh, noticeable here. Again, this is because it, it's normal. Every time when you uh, place something into ear as a mounting medium. Look, where's the arrow? I have to find the arrow. Here is, here it is. Yeah. You look. Uh, let's look at the one here. You can. Can you see that the edges of uh, the fur is, is kind of dark, right? Yeah. So uh, this ba basically means that some of the details are covered up, and this is uh, they're, they're black. The edges here because of the strong differences. Um, yeah. 
unless I go out of focus, right? But when it's uh, uh, kind of dark here because they, the difference in refractive index between the, the specimen and the surrounding ear is high. And so the light is refractive and this kind of gives those dark lines here. And those dark lines here on the edges um, basically can be useful because sometimes um, some objects are very difficult to see. Um, for example, in the case of bacteria, which are very small and transparent, um, you can see them better because of the difference in the refractive index sometimes and uh, because they have, the objects have this dark uh, border. However, at the same time, these are artifacts and they kind of cover up um, also some of the, the details. You see? Yeah. So that's why the choice, the correct choice in mounting medium usually is, is important. So if I were to put the sheep here into, um, into a liquid mounting medium, most likely not water because the sheep here is a little bit fatty and uh, therefore in water it won't, uh, um, yeah, it will form a lot of bubbles. But in this case, I recommend that you use uh, oil, vegetable oil, kitchen oil, cooking oil. And then you're going to see that, uh, that as a matter of fact, many of the hair will start to be appear much brighter and because of the lower refractive difference in refractive index. Yeah? So this was a little excursion into, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so th these are basically the wool of a sheep. Okay, also stained. So I'm going to go again into to some of the the comments. Oops, I have to sunflower maybe also stained. I skip down, 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 down. Oliver, do you have a sample of stem of Nerium TS? Boo, I don't know. I, I have I have to I have to see. Uh, it was, what does it say? Stem of Nerium. I'm just going to check here in the, in the yellow box. Um, and uh, if not, maybe in another box. Yeah, so I'll just uh, show you dandelion here. Lily pollen, a phlox leaf, agar. We're gonna have a look at this here as well, okay? I have something to say about the agar. No, I think uh, at least here not. Agar. Um, some of you might know this, that in microbiology you use uh, agar, uh, agar plates, right? And this is a polysaccharide um, which is used to make a very gel-like um, yeah, growth medium for bacteria. And this agar polysaccharide actually comes from the algae, agar algae. Um, and is used uh, yeah, now in microbiology uh, quite a, a lot uh, uh, to make those um, mounting, uh, not mounting, the, uh, make those uh, growth media. Okay, so this is um, apparently now, um, yeah, the, uh, yeah, some, some of the, the algae, the agar algae. Um, and let's have a look at this. Uh, I know that I'm switching back now to the plants. And this is it. Okay. Uh. What? 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 This is not. Is this? I don't know. Don't tell me they just took uh, the pure agar, made a little. This does not look like like the agar uh, uh, of algae. Or is it? I don't know. That would be kind of interesting. This is a very un unidentifiable blob. <laughs> Could, I mean, they wouldn't have taken just a little bit of the, of the medium itself and, and then put it on here. I mean, it wouldn't make a lot of sense. But look, there are bubbles in here. Could it be that they simply took some agar medium uh, dried it and put it on here? I have no idea. This is really, huh? That's, re that's the weirdest one. Yeah, because actually there is a little um, a drawing here of, of, of the algae itself here. Yeah. But, uh, just show it to you. There is a little drawing here that's uh, supposed to look like, but this blob here is, yeah, actually <laughs> doesn't look like anything. <laughs> Okay, let, let's continue here. What, do, what else do we have? I'm just going to go a little bit randomly here. Shrimp antennas. Okay, this sounds this sounds interesting. The antenna of of of, of a shrimp. 
So I need to always switch back a little bit to the microscope view. Ah, yeah. Again, focus a little bit. Okay. That here is the antenna of a shrimp. At least uh, the exoskeleton. <laughs> Seems to have this spiral shaped structure. I mean, the advantage of those slides indeed is, is that um, yeah, they can't break that easily. <laughs> but um, I think it's, it's a pity because they are significantly smaller. I mean, if you cannot properly put them into a microscope, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, I guess you the kids would be probably using microscopes with uh, with stage clips. In this case, it would work, but they're way smaller than the standard microscope slides. Uh, so, so let let me check again a couple of the the questions here. Okay, I go down. Sunflower palm maybe stained with eosin. I already talked about that. Yes, Oliver, a sample of stem of nerium. No, I have not found one. Okay. Can I get blood? I need to keep it. Blood sample. So, okay, here is a question again. Do you think that preservative like formaldehyde was added into most of the prepared samples to increase shelf life. Um, let's put it this way, not on those, uh, basically the question is, is some kind of a preservative like formaldehyde on here. I would probably say on these here, right now there is no formaldehyde left uh, because the samples are all dry and formaldehyde of course is, is, is water soluble. Uh, normally what you do is, is you uh, you take tissue samples uh, like from animal tissue and uh, you uh, put it uh, in, into that solution to uh, to so called to do so, so called fixing it's called uh, the, the proteins are, are denatured and the specimen is preserved um, and then uh, essentially it's washed again and it's embedded and it's it's dried and, and then you have a slide um, but generally you do not have formaldehyde or which is in liquid form, of course, here. Could it be that some of the specimens were actually first treated in formaldehyde? Possibly, but I don't think that it's always necessary. Um, what I usually do is, is many of the specimens are dry anyway, like for example, the fluff of a dandelion and the hair that you see here. Um, there is no need really to, to do anything like that because in their natural form, they do not contain a lot of water anyway. Um, so they do not uh, need to be preserved because they are dry already. Um, and what I usually do to uh, moist samples, if you want to remove the water, if you cannot air dry it, then um, I usually do that by adding some alcohol. Um, I don't uh, work with formaldehyde myself, but uh, using that is um, indeed uh, uh, used to, if you're working with uh, tissue samples. Yeah? But again, not everything need, not all of the specimens actually need it. Yeah? Um, yeah, I do not have phase contrast and no polarizing and no DIC, um, not always necessary. Um, let's put it this way, um, you cannot say that, let's say, phase contrast is always better. It really depends on the specimen. Yeah? There are some specimens where they look horrible in phase contrast and much better in bright field and vice versa. Um, so it really depends very much on what you want to see and on the specimen. Yeah? So it is um, just a, a thing. For example, if you want like to look at bacteria, um, and if this is your area of interest, then phase contrast is probably something that you want to have, or you stain the bacteria. Yeah? Uh, but otherwise, um, yeah, for example, for observing water samples or thicker specimens, phase contrast doesn't look so so good. Yeah. Um, Micro hunter, I heard that you can switch from four times to ten times objective, but it is not good to switch from ten times to four times. What I mean is that some people say that it is bad to switch your objectives backwards. Um, let's put it this way. Let me explain this here. I don't see a problem with that, but I think with the switching backwards, they mean something different. Okay. So the thing is the following. 
um, for for educational use. I don't know. I, I just put put. I don't know. Uh, let's put the sheep here again here. Okay. Um, and what you do is is if you want to start microscopy, um, what you always do is you always start with low power. Okay. And the reason why you start with low power is is of course you can orient yourself better. You also have um, you can center it much better this way and you also have a large, large better depth of field. So if, you, if the focus is a little bit off, like right now, like you're still able to see it and you know into which direction to turn it, right? And then once everything is in, is in focus, then you can go up to the next higher one, okay? Um, and then you refocus and you recenter. Are you allowed to go back now? Of course, why not? I, I see no problem. What they actually mean is, is that you should not start a microscopy with a higher power, yeah? Um, let's say that um, it's it's out of focus right now, okay? And you should not, and you kind of yeah go in here, and it's not a good idea um, to kind of try to find the focus knob because you don't know into which direction to turn the focus knob, right? Um, so for this reason, what you do is, is you don't touch the focus knob. You start off uh, with the four times, you focus it, and then you go higher. Yeah. So it is. I think that the going back is not the problem. Um, I think what the problem is, is if you try to find the focus first with a higher power objective. Yeah? Um, so that's, that's my, my take um, on the whole thing. Yeah? And in, in school, you always uh, teach students as well, um, the, uh, make sure that you always start with a low power first because it's much easier and much faster. Yeah? And then sometimes it does happen that some students uh, are so worried about crashing the high power objective, even though everything was in focus, that they start to defocus it again. Yeah, they lower the stage before rotating in the higher power objective because they're kind of worried that the, the, otherwise the objective is going to crash into the slide, which is not going to happen. Yeah? It kind of completely defeats the purpose, but we've uh, exper experienced everything already like this. Yeah? Yeah, lots of comments here, very nice. Okay, so people are asking each other as well. Um, just to keep everything going, I'm not going to read everything here. I hope I'm not, yeah. Um, here, uh, Micropuncture, I would like to see how a plastic slide looks with like with DSC even if they interfere. Let's try it here, okay? So I'm gonna use the 10 times, I'm going to move in the 10 times and the uh, and now the, the um, how do you say, the, the prism. So this is now DIC and uh, I'm now going to uh, turn, I'm going to turn now the, the this little uh, knob here and there's a prism in here which is shifted left and right, and uh, which changes now the background color. Okay. So this is a little bit how, how it looks like. And uh, uh, the, the effect is not really very much because uh, what DIC usually does, it gives you a little bit of a three-dimensional impression of, of, the, of the specimen. But you see, if I turn this, the only thing that really changes seems to be mostly the, the background color. Now let's go to a place where, yeah, this is basically where there's only tape. Yeah, so, yeah, hmm. somehow the tape does seem to take away the effect as well. Maybe because it does uh, depolarize a little bit. Yeah, so, yeah. so that's now DIC, but. Mm, not so much an, uh, an interesting effect. Let me remove this here. But what we can try now is, is because some people were asking, what about phase contrast? I have a 40 times phase contrast, okay? Um, objective here, which I'm gonna rotate into position. It's a 40 times phase contrast. I have to put the phase annulus here as well. I'm gonna open it. And this is how it looks like in phase, 40 times phase contrast. Okay. You do see that, ah, that's interesting, yeah? You do see the typical phase contrast effect that the hair, the wool, has this bright halo around it, but I think the magnification is also quite high. Yeah. So you see, not so suitable, right? So um, in this case, I would actually then say, is this stay with, uh, you know what, I'm gonna, I've got DIC and phase now, let's, maybe it's gonna be brighter now, yeah. Before it was, it was actually, I still had DIC prism in there. That's now phase contrast without anything else. Yeah. You see the bright halo around the individual wool here. That is uh, a typical phase contrast effect. Yeah. Yeah. 
yeah, not so, I would say not so interesting. It's, this is not bright field. Okay, no, this is, um, this is not bright field. Okay, and you, you can actually see that you, you can actually see more details even here, um, yeah, even on the here. So let's uh, um, let's uh, um, move on. Okay, I've just seen where do you get diatom prepared slides? Um, I don't think that there are anyone here. You can buy them. I, I would actually check uh, online, Amazon, of course, and um, or you can um, try some educational supplies companies, and you can uh, try to get some diatom slides there or. Um, you just make them yourself uh, because uh, getting diatoms is not so difficult. However, there are some very nice diatom prepared slides, maybe that's what you're kind of uh, interested in, where they are arranged. In the back in the day, in the 19th century, people liked to arrange diatom slides uh, by moving the individual diatoms into nice patterns. Um, and uh, this has been done uh, quite, uh, quite nicely. And, uh, um, I think those slides might not be so cheap because uh, Victorian age microscope slides are collector's items and apparently not so cheap. Yeah, um, yeah. I want that on prepared slides, please, but also bacteria. Well, if you want to uh, making bacteria is, is um, also not so difficult. Um, you can get yourself uh, some safe bacteria from yogurt and you can stain them. Um, so that is uh, possible as well. Um, otherwise, uh, you can uh, buy uh, you can buy them um, from um, online from companies, and there are some educational supplies companies where you just have to Google them. Um, sometimes the um, the companies, like I mean, for example, this one here is this uh, yeah from from Amazon. What they will contain is is those light boxes um, will basically contain also a lot of general slides. But sometimes, uh, yeah, you, they don't always list uh, which slides you get. Okay, and for example, here there are no um, there are for over your plants and animal tissue, but bacteria, for example, not. Yeah. So you have to actually look a little bit um, what they actually contain. Yeah. So let let's move on a little bit again. Um, yeah. So these were some of the blue ones here. I don't know. I would like to. I'm gonna randomly pick out a few more. Sardine scale, a sardine that, that that's a fish, a fish scale. Uh -huh. I mean, at least you are getting a couple of specimens that you normally probably would not get. But you already know what I'm thinking here, right? What am I thinking? I'm thinking already, is there a possibility maybe to get them out of the from the plastic slide and kind of <laughs> do a proper mount of them? <laughs> that's a fish scale. Ha, ah, here we go. Yeah. Here again, you see the bubbles. Yeah, and luckily it's on a different level here. And here that is a fish scale. They, they kind of also cut it into a square. Look at this. <laughs> Interesting. I don't know if, I, if I'm gonna actually try to remount those. It's a lot of work. But I think I'm just, and I'm not gonna do that. I think I'm just gonna leave it because it's also interesting to, to actually have these slides also as demonstration objects. You know, if sometimes if You've got the visitors coming in, some 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 kids, and you want to show them something very quickly. Yeah, then then quality alone, then they're not going to be concerned about a couple of bubbles, yeah, on, on the tape. Yeah, you just want to show them something, something interesting that they can relate to, and you say that's a fish scale, right? Oh, really? That's how it looks like, and, and then then they're already fascinated, and and I have to tell you that I, I myself uh, uh, like like this as well. It's not, it doesn't have to be perfect quality. It's just that you are able to see things that you normally don't get your hands um, hands on. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see, I see it. Yeah, let's add a little bit of color. Yeah, not, not so much difference. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it, I'm gonna leave it at, um, yeah. In bright field, again, because yeah, for comparison. Let's close the condenser a little bit. So, um, what, do we, what else do we have here? Horse hair. Okay, horse hair. Fine. Let's put some horse hair under the microscope. I mean, people are playing a violin. I'm not. But the, I think the bow, I think is it's called, well, it's also horse hair. 
but if I only find it, see, that's the thing. Don't do that. What did we say? You always start at a lower magnification because it gives you a better overview. Um, and bubbles, where is the here? Let me swing out the condenser here a little bit. Oh, that's the hair. One hair. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Look at this black line. This black horizontal line. That's our horse hair, apparently. Okay. <laughs> so be it. <laughs> um, okay. Um, now what? Uh, let's, let's go higher with the magnification. Uh, it's a pretty dark hair. Very pigmented, absorbs a lot of light, so, yeah. Uh, I'm not able to... Uh, normally, what if, if the hair is uh, recently bright, you're able to actually see the different layers of the hair and that there's a central canal. Um, but this hair is so dark. Let's turn up the light here. Now we're able to see it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, so that is the horse here. <laughs> okay, <laughs> now, one single horse here they've given me here. Um, yeah, let me quickly go up again. Okay, yeah, they're talking about the DIC here. Yeah, some algae. Yep, uh, yeah, okay, microscope has an Abbey condenser. I also bought a dry dark field condenser, okay. Um, I like bacteria like E. coli, prepared slice from fish they caught. Um, what you might, what you uh, might want to try is if you have fish, uh, and uh, I've actually done this with chicken, and it should be also with fish. If you take some of some of the fish, uh, even if it's boiled, I took some boiled chicken. If you may take the individual muscle fibers of a fish, then you might actually see the dark and the white, the light and the dark bands of the muscle fibers. Yeah. So can you look at cardiac muscle from your Amazon set? Do you know what the rules are? Um, you ask and I'll have a look here. From the Amazon set, I'm, where is the cardiac muscle? Uh, where is the cardiac muscle? Can I find it? Let me, just a second. Kind of, um, where is it? Human blood. Can, do, do I even have that? Uh, human blood smear, dog esophagus, pine stem, rabbit spinal cord, rabbit testis, Car do dog cardiac muscles, LS means longitudinal section number 20, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, this must be 20, pig motor nerve, no. Rabbit testes. Did I mess the whole thing up here? Dense connective tissue. Uh, sorry, uh, you haven't seen this. I have to find the slide. And we can we can actually also. Oh, here it is. Got it. Dog cardiac muscle. Here it is. Okay. Um, yeah. So let's have a quick look um, at this. I did not. The order is uh, not correct now, doesn't matter. Uh, but maybe this gives us also a little bit of an impression of, of a quality difference. So let's, let me put this in again. Microscope view is here. So that's again the horse here. So I'm just gonna add this one over here. Let's move this in, condenser. And uh, again, we're going to have to find it somehow. Let me do it like this because of the thickness of the specimen. Let me go, let me go four times. Um, lower, this is this, no DIC. So I have to find it first. But that's not it. Oh, that's such a thin cross section and a lot of dust as well. Okay, uh, I think they've been cutting this a little bit fairly thin. This is not a particularly good specimen either. 
Um, I have to. I'm going to check maybe later the the others because this is was cut so thinly that I'm not even able to see anything here, which actually shows that apparently. Even those slides here are not always that good. I don't even know if you're able to see this in the background. This is... Ignore all of those dots. But the muscle, I'm, I, need, I, need, I need now... Here, ah, here we now go a little bit into focus here. And the contrast is quite low. So I have now, yeah. So that's, that's, that's the heart muscle of a dog. I think those dots must be the nuclei that you're able to see here. But um, I think that the ones in this set that I have here from Amazon were actually fairly, uh, was also fairly cheap. Um, and uh, it's different, let me show you. Um, this one here, the set here is different from the others that I have because I've got some, some other here, here. Um, the, they were cut a little bit thicker and therefore you actually also see it better. Yeah? But it actually also shows a little bit that um, yeah, much depends on the preparation of, um, of the slide. Yeah? So you know what, um, I'm gonna open up the next uh, box um, again Okay, um, let me see again if uh, I don't want to overlook any, any questions and uh, how would you permanently mount a cilia? Do you think water-based Elmer's glue would work? Uh, yeah, it would work, but the problem is a different one and that's generally a problem with I think many water organisms and that is, is that um, when you dry it or when they lose water um, then they start to shrink and deform. So uh, mounting water uh, organisms is, uh, is difficult and usually what you do for algae and for ciliates, you use a mounting medium called glycerin jelly or glycerol jelly or glycerol gelatin. This is a mounting medium which does not completely dry, it remains semi-solid and that's why you have to also ring the, 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 the cover glass. You have to put a, a ring around it to prevent it from completely drying out. Um, so, um, and it's apparently also difficult to use. I've never used it myself because um, it's uh, difficult to use. <laughs> um, it makes bubbles and you have to heat up the glycerin jelly um, so that it becomes liquid. See, and now, now I cannot even get it out of the box. And then if you heat it up too much, however, then it won't become solid anymore at all because you destroy the, the, the gelatin. Yeah. So it's a difficult, to, so glycerol jelly is a difficult to use mounting medium, but um, is used for mounting uh, pollen, which is, which is also kind of uh, water sensitive. Um, it shouldn't dry out completely and also some, some delicate water microorganisms. Yeah? So this is a little bit the, 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 the difficulty here. Yeah? Would you consider to start a Discord channel where it will allow community to post the image of their samples? Um, a couple of comments here. Um, there is, all, uh, I'm, I'm going to advertise this now, Diet Toms has uh, contacted me some time ago and he's got a Discord channel. Um, I have to tell you that I'm a little bit too busy right now with yet another um, yeah, thing, microscopy related thing. I've considered it. Um, so if you want to post your images and if you want to share them, um, for, uh, because if I, if I start a Discord channel, I've got to maintain it, I've got to administrate this and so on. But if you want to share your images or something like this, if you go on Reddit and um, I've got a subreddit called Microbe Hunter. And I'm just using this now to also simply repost my, my videos that I make. But if you want to, and you can of course also post in images there, but of course there is for many more people to see also the, the microscopy Reddit, um, uh, Reddit subreddit, um, which is also um, yeah, used quite frequently. But I, I would definitely do use my Microbe Hunter subreddit as well. Yeah? But um, if I start another thing, then I, I might really run out of time. So what is this here, honey bee leg? Okay, that's a, that's a popular one. Um, let's have a look here, uh, this here, but let me put the thing away, the slide away first, the blue one. 
because I already have too many micro I've got uh, several microscopy related channels already going I've got uh, yeah a website that I need to kind of rework a little bit and get cleaned up I've been thinking about actually writing a short guide on how to buy a microscope because I'm getting so many questions about that that I'm not able to respond and the questions are always uh, um, yeah could be simple to answer but actually they're difficult to answer because different people have so many different demands um, and expectations that it's difficult yeah so I'm now not starting with a four times but with a ten times and this here is now the B leg and uh, of course what do we see here very typical again for an ear mounted oh look it's even broken here and um, it's very dark what's this fuzzy the fuzz here okay um, it's very dark and uh, this is uh, very common again uh, for ear mounted specimens if I were to put it for example into um, into mounting medium like Uperol which I have already talked about before and this will have a significant clearing action but I wonder what those strings are what are these lines I mean my first thought is this could it be some kind of a fungus maybe growing there I don't know all the, yeah interesting you see I'm more interested in this stuff around it than in the B leg itself <laughs> interesting okay yeah some fuzz on the B, B leg <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah okay thanks uh, for your response to my request I guess this was about the cardiac muscle um, you know what I, I don't know if I have uh, let, let me quickly check here um, also to show you a little bit uh, some better quality slides here um, you see your amoeba you see it, it's typed out this is uh, from back from the day 19 from the 80s um, so these are here again it's all written in German skeletal muscle skeletal muscle is here I don't know if I have cardiac muscle I don't remember everything here so let me quickly uh, have a look here um, so that's yeah, so these are artery and vein. So I, these are the plants down here. So I don't know if I have a cardiac muscle anywhere. I've got a whole bunch of other muscles, like for example, smooth muscle over here. I don't think so. Let me have. Okay, malaria. Dog flea, so again, kind of rücken, near, net, so. There's some bacteria, and again, the plants here. No, I don't think I have any, any, unless I overlooked it, I don't remember that I have uh, cardiac muscles. Oh, okay, this would have been interesting a little bit to compare it, um, uh, yeah, uh, with uh, different uh, prepared slides. So I just opened this one up here. Um, yeah, we're back here on the microscope here. Yeah, that was the bee's leg, which uh, is again uh, very dark, which is not surprising for a whole mount. Yeah. Honestly, oh, come on. Honestly, this is not a nice looking specimen. Look, it's, it's, it's cut off here. Normally, what do you want to, if you, if you actually uh, already put an insect leg under the microscope, you want to actually put the, the claws. That's the interesting part. Yeah, look, and it was just cut off here, and it's even damaged here a little bit. Yeah, maybe because it was compressed. I, I know why it broke here. I, I suppose they put the specimen on here, and then they put the tape over it, and they, they pressed it, and this kind of crushed, crushed the specimen. That's why there is this crack in the leg. A honeybee wing. Okay, the wing. Let's have a look at the wing at least. Here is the wing. We should be able to see the tiny little hair as well. Yep, that is the wing and oh, they also cut it. Well, which kind of makes sense a little bit because otherwise it would be too large to actually fit on here. But actually, I, I personally always like it a lot if, if you're actually able to see, see the whole structure. Yeah. But here again, being a very flat, being very flat, um, um, you can see that there is a little bit this interaction between of the of the glue of the tape uh, with with the wing, so that means you see those bubbles again. 
Where is this? Yeah. Which are these artifacts here, the bubbles you know, of, of tape. Yeah. So, yeah, wing. Hmm. And then you see the little tiny little hair on the surface of the wing. Hmm. This one I have to tell you I don't like so much. It looks a little bit... I've, so I have I've indeed seen spe better specimens, even the ones that I made. Yeah? Uh, but then again, the whole wing is is actually surrounded by mounting medium. Shrimp eggs. Never seen shrimp eggs before under the microscope. So that's actually quite interesting. Ah, oh, yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> shrimp eggs. I've uh, some months ago I put the the so-called the sea monkeys under the microscope, and. Uh, these are um, yeah, tiny little shrimp as well. Oh yeah, they look kind of also a little bit dried up and shriveled up. Yeah, so these are, yeah, and they're a little bit transparent even, so that's that's fine. Yeah, because the ones, the sea monkey eggs, they were completely black and uh, you could not see anything, just black circles. Okay. Let me go down here. Please consider a Discord. It would be amazing if you can't make it yourself. Maybe ask someone or something, but it would be so cool. Um, yeah, uh, uh, you know what? I'll, I'll have a look um, into the whole thing. Uh, but I think, the, I mean, there are already microscopy Discords out there. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, uh, you know what? I'll, I'll have a look, okay? I know some people were already um, asking me, can I not do some Twitch streaming? And uh, yeah, and I said, no, I'm just gonna do it on, 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 on YouTube. Yeah. So there are many possibilities, of course. Huh? The stain for the specimen does not look right, okay? Yeah. Don't know now which uh, specimen you are referring to, but uh, yeah. So I'm going to skip forward again. I nearly bought those lights of Amazon on screen. Are they plastic? Yes, they are plastic. I put um, I put affiliate links down into the description. I'm not recommending it or disrecommending it. Um, yeah, the, the slides are as they are. The the reason why I bought them is, is because <laughs> I wanted to ha um, just test and, and see how they actually looked like. And they were pretty cheap. Yeah? And indeed, there are specimens in here that you I normally I, otherwise I don't have. Yeah? But uh, what we see is that some specimens actually look better than others. Huh? A dragonfly leg, for example, a dragonfly wing, a locust egg, locust antenna. Okay, interesting. So let's try a locust egg here. Let's see, that's interesting. What does it say? Locust leg, not egg, leg leg of a locust so i guess a part of the exoskeleton i suppose oh yeah interesting almost looks a little bit like modern art ah that's a four times uh so ten times oh that's okay um what i would be kind of interested in a little bit and that's um i think um Somebody simply has to take the time to do that. I mean, those companies, they're producing uh, slides of all different kinds and shapes and forms and, and, and specimens, obviously. Uh, but to have a short little description of, uh, of the objects that you see. I mean, for example, which part of the locust leg is this? Uh, I guess it must be, yeah, maybe part of the exoskeleton. It looks almost like it, if it's cut open on one side and folded apart, maybe, yeah? Um, I don't know, um, and uh, simply to have a little bit of, a, of an explanation would be quite nice. Um, I've been thinking about something, maybe somebody's going to pick up that idea. It would be kind of easily possible to, uh, to put a little QR code um, on, um, on those slides, and then when you take your mobile phone and then you take a picture of the QR code, you're automatically connected to a web page which gives you a description. I mean, that would be kind of, uh, yeah. Cool, especially for an educational setting. I mean, then you have kids, uh, students are looking at those slides and they want to have a, a description of this and uh, because you cannot fit it on here, um, yeah, it would be possible. Yeah, or, I don't know, that's also something, <laughs> I don't know if some of you remember, there used to be something called microfilm where you can actually have very microscopic text to put a description <laughs> in form of microfilm also on the slide. Oh, just, I'm getting crazy now a little bit. 
Yeah. But uh, essentially, what I think you get my point, it would be kind of nice to have a little bit more information uh, here. Locust wings of a locust. Let's have a look here. Oh, yeah. That's the wing. You can see again the veins here. Again, a little bit some of the hair. Those little dots, basically some tiny hair. Yeah, hmm. Well, yeah. Again, um, for, for people who don't know much about these things, it might be a little bit difficult to make sense of, of what you see. Drosophila wing. So that is a wing of a, of a Drosophila. Drosophila is a fruit fly, which is uh, used, of course, uh, in research a lot. So evident, obviously, they have a, have a lot of these samples. Again, I have to kind of find it where it is. Here it is. That's the wing of a fruit fly. The wing tip needs to refocus. Here we go. Yeah. Again, doesn't make a for for yeah just for out of interest for people who just have never seen this before. It's okay, but of course I'm I'm able to see that there is now, um, of course uh, again. Those artifacts where you see that uh, where there are. Where the tape is sticking to the wing and where it's not sticking, so there means that there are these bubbles again. Yeah. Let's let's zoom in a little bit more. Let's see how well those yeah, tiny little hair look like. Yep. And forty times. I need to also adjust a little bit the, the prism. Yeah, but I think that is again okay. Oh, I've, uh, yeah, that's Brightfield. Um, I accidentally had left DIC in there. So uh, I go down again here. Okay. Can cyanobacteria, can cyanobacteria be toxic? Yes, of course. Yeah, there are, it depends on the cyanobacteria, but in some ponds that are uh, highly contaminated with cyanobacteria, they can give you some, some skin issues as well. So, so yeah, of course they can. Uh, so it depends again um, on, 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 on the species. But if you see a, a very dark green pond, um, yeah, with uh, lots of cyanobacteria, then I would say, mm, yeah, you don't know what it is. Okay, so you might uh, want to avoid it. Yeah? There are two kinds of glycerol jelly: nach Kaiser, nach Kissa. Yes, which one do you use for which purpose? The Kissa one is the one that you use for pollen. Um, it is a, a, a very similar, those two formulations, but uh, the Kaiser one is, uh, I think, the more general purpose one. But specifically, the pollen people, they use the one according to Kissa. I don't know why, but uh, this seems to be the standard. And the Kaiser one is, I think, the, 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 the standard formulation. Um, in glycerol, maybe, maybe it has to do something with the, the um, the amount of, of glycerol um, um, or jelly in it. Um, um, I've, I've once checked the recipe, the, the ingredients are the same, but I think the proportions are different. Uh, Kisa is the one for pollen. That is uh, the one that I, what I remember, but I would say it probably doesn't matter so much. Okay. Um, so, uh, but uh, what I heard is, is that the, the glycerin jelly is difficult, really difficult to use. Uh, it makes a lot of bubbles. You have to warm the slide. That means you need a need need a warm plate uh, to uh, to keep the the, the jelly uh, liquid um, until you place the cover glass on top. Um, then um, it will solidify. You have to dry it a little bit, and then you have to actually ring. You have to put a ring around uh, the slide. I'm going to show you. For those of you who don't know what I mean, uh, is I, I show you here um, because. Uh, this ring um, not only prevents uh, complete dehydration of the slide, yeah, so that's a ringed slide, yeah, but it also stabilizes the cover glass yeah, because uh, glycerol jelly uh, does not become completely solid. It stays semi-solid. Yeah, so there is still water there and that's why there has to be also a disinfectant included to prevent uh, decomposing. Um, otherwise, it's going to get, might turn bad. And the ring here, yeah, 
also prevents uh, spores from the outside to come in and it prevents complete dehydration and also physically stabilizes the cover glass. Yeah? So uh, that, that's another thing why um, I don't like to work so much with glycerin jelly. Okay? So let's, let's put it back again. And if you want to know how to make those rings, um, you need a slide ringing table. And if you check uh, the, um, either this channel or the other one, the micropunter microscopy one, I actually show you also how to use a slide ringing table, which I bought some, some years ago. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah. So butterfly leg, yeah, this is general stuff. Butterfly wing, okay, this looks very dark, um, so I wonder if we're actually even, even able to see any details. Um, so let's have a look here. But maybe, yeah, see, that, that, that's exactly the problem. If you have uh, too much, uh, yeah, even at full maximum, I need to open the condenser now. I'm opening the condenser. Yep, simply too dark. Um, you have to, um, yeah, this is a typical slide that you use uh, with, uh, I mean, I've got, I don't have my stereo microscope here right now, but that would be a typical slide for stereo microscopy. Yeah. Um, if I have, yeah, of course I don't. Um, you can use a four times, uh, the four times objective and then uh, put some flashlight on top and then you're able to see it as well. But thick specimens like, like this are not suitable. Okay, so. Um, that is the thing. So I, I, we're still, I still have a box somewhere. Look at the box. The last, the last box is a green box. Let's, let's open this as well. So let me put the other slides away. So let me open this. Diet Toms, oh thanks, we'll have to add your subreddit to the R microscopy sidebar. Oh, thank you, um, I didn't know that this is uh, possible. <laughs> I just made the subreddit some, some time ago simply because I didn't want to spam, I didn't want to spam the microscopy reddit, subreddit with uh, my videos. Um, and uh, therefore I made my own uh, micropunter subreddit uh, so that I, the people can also have, still have access. So that's the green one here. Ah yeah, the standard thing. Onion epidermis, and it looks very dark. I think this must have been stained as well. So. Uh, where is it? Uh, always go down with the magnification. Here, ah, okay. Actually, it doesn't even look that bad, as bad as I, as I anticipated. Ah, uh, you see the bubbles. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but still better than nothing. <laughs> yeah, no, because I do have uh, other um, epidermis cells and they, they were stained so much that you're not able to see anything again. You know, but these are, of course, onion cells. But uh, yeah, you know what? If you want to look at onion cells, just grab yourself an onion and, and make a, a temporary mount. That's what I say. It's so easy to make and uh, um, if you really um, increase the magnification, you can actually see the movements uh, um, going on inside the cell. So they're actually uh, the, the movement of the vesicles and so on. Yeah. So it, it, it's a little bit of a, yeah. Yeah. Of course, onion, because that's uh, always uh, pretty much part of, um, yeah. A lot. Lo lo what? Lotus root. What in the world? Okay. The root of a lotus. Mm -hmm. Again, a stained specimen. Ah. Oh, that is the cross section, evidently. Interesting, okay. Um, so, this must be the dark red line on the side, must be the epidermis of the root, I guess. But individual cells are difficult to see, okay. Look, uh, root cross sections really look nice and stem cross sections of plants. They really look very artistic. Remove the arrow. So in this sense, it's a little bit again of a pity that I'm not able to see the individual cells very well. Hmm. But let's go down with the magnification simply to get a better overall look of how this is actually supposed to 
be like. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's of course not uh, not complete. Uh, it has to be it was cut quartered because otherwise it would have been too big, obviously. So what else do we have here? That it's uh, uh, again leaf potato starch. Okay. Now now this is what I want to know because uh, potato starch grains are easy to um, yeah of course get yourself uh, from potato directly. So now how does this look like here? And uh, let's go up with magnification. Where are the starch grains? Here they, here they are. Aha. Uh -huh. Let's see this here. Let's see this here. Hmm. Yup. Okay. Well. Yeah, I, I think I'll, I'll, I'll pass those. In polarized light, of course, they look especially nice. Yeah, here. Um, when you want to do a polarized light microscopy, get yourself, last time I talked about this, get yourself a polarization filter, okay? Put the starch grains between cross polarized light and, uh, yeah. okay, here they are. Okay, I, I think they just look like they're supposed to look like. But again, you see, they have all—all uh, all of them have a very dark um, border around it, and that is because they're surrounded by air. Big difference in diff big di refractive index difference, and therefore you get those black borders around the starch grains, which can be a little bit, yeah, takes a little bit away from the beauty, I would say, yeah? but makes them easier to see. Yeah. Um, so, um, there are two kinds of glycerol jelly. Okay, we already talked about that. I hope you did not pay much for this uh, purchase of uh, slide set. <laughs> uh, it was the cheapest one I could get and that's why I bought it. <laughs> I really wanted to see, okay, what is, uh, um, yeah, um, how good is uh, the cheapest slide set possible? And uh, there were many slides, so basically, yeah, I paid around 12 euros, which is or uh, on Amazon.com it's even cheaper. I think they're charging nine US dollars for the whole slide set, and uh, yeah, I would say, I mean, I don't regret buying it because there are a couple of specimens in here that you cabbage leaf that I didn't have before. Um, but of course, I didn't expect uh, any any miracles. The only thing I kind of am a little bit disappointed is that the slides are not standard size, and therefore I cannot fit them on my stage. Cabbage leaf, yeah. I mean, if you're not able to see the cells, then it's a pity. Again, if you, uh, as I mentioned before, if you put a full um, yeah leaf like this under the microscope, then you have multiple cell layers. And then it can sometimes be difficult to actually see the individual cells. Maybe possible to see the individual stomates. If I'm focusing on the correct side of the leaf. On the other side. Yeah, okay, that's a cabbage leaf. So I'm going to go again. Uh, are the slides plastic? Yes, they are plastic and there, there is a tape over them. So this basically means that, um, yeah, uh, basically that uh, you don't make slides like that normally, okay? Um, plastic has a whole bunch of disadvantages as well. Uh, not only clarity, but uh, if you use polarized light uh, and these things. They look very cheap and nasty. Uh, they are cheap, they were cheap, um, and my expectations were not very high. Um, yeah, but you get a lot of slides. <laughs> Let's put it this way, at least I have a topic to talk about for this live stream. It's good for that at least. What does it say here? Sponge. The stem of a sponge, okay. Let's go down a little bit. Yeah, if you, um, yeah.
low contrast. The thing that you see best is the air bubble. Yeah, no, that's not. Yeah, not so good. I mean, yeah, some some of the specimens were surprisingly good. I'm not saying great, but at least uh, usable. And sometimes, like this one over here, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, what do we expect from a Made in China product? Well, honestly, it depends a lot um, on, 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 the, um, on the quality. I mean, from China, you can get pretty much everything. You can get, uh, it depends really on the importer of what quality standards they, pr yeah, they have. Yeah? You can have uh, everything very cheaply made um, and uh, you can also get uh, more decent uh, products as well. So it depends really quite a bit on the, on the, on the importer, what quality standards they are actually placing. Yeah? Yeah. Ah, yes, Diet Tom, I would definitely be happy to help you get the Discord off the ground. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, indeed, uh, um, let, I have to sleep over the whole thing a little bit. Okay, um, I don't know really how much work is involved there. Um, but uh, if it is something that the community would like to have, then, then why not? Yeah. Okay. Sadly, I'm old enough to remember microfilm or microfiche. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is uh, yeah. My, microfilm is, is a, a photographic film where they used to actually com uh, compress documents. Yeah? Um, so then you actually needed some kind of a microscope or a microscopic projector to be able to read those documents. Yeah? So, um, yeah, even I used to work with microfilm and I thought this would kind of be interesting to kind of revive microfilm and maybe put some stuff um, on microfilm and then on a slide to, to, to read or to observe. Huh? Okay. Uh, no QR code on the slide. It will take the fun away from independent research since the user will always rely on the QR code. It will also add cost, will pay more. Okay, um, interesting point. Interesting point for those of you who um, we did not hear that. My suggestion initially, or my idea, or my brainstorm, so to say, was this, is, this would be kind of nice if you um, could uh, place more information on here, maybe in a booklet or whatever. And I had the suggestion, maybe in the time of internet, why not put a QR code here and you take a picture with a mobile phone and then you can read all about the stuff that you have here. And now there is an interesting um, comment here from uh, Health Babe saying, well, if you actually provide too much information, what about the independent research? Um, that's, of course, an, an interesting point. It reminds me of, of a comment. I don't know if it was in one of my YouTube videos or um, an email. I think it was must, must have been a comment in one of my YouTube videos uh, where somebody said, as well, um, there was, they were so interested in microscopy, but essentially... Um, yeah, sooner or later, especially with all of those YouTube videos and everything, it kind of takes a little bit the mystery away of, of, of everything. Yeah. Um, so, um, so I get it. Yeah. If you provide too much information, then yeah, where where's the mystery, so to say? Yeah? But then, uh, in in my, my heart, I'm again a teacher a little bit, uh, teaching students as well, and have this always this kind of this explainer mentality. <laughs> and uh, I would like to have things explained as well. And uh, yeah. so there seems to be this trade off. What is this? This could be some kind of a dust. Looks like a leg, but it's. Uh, it looks more like an interesting, like a plant. Plant here. Yeah. Yeah, not, not such a good specimen either. What does it say here? Cucumber ovary. Nah. If, I, if I'm not able to see the individual cells, then I'm a little bit disappointed. Corn pollen, okay, corn pollen. Let's have a look again at a few pollen here. Ah, yeah. Again, a stained specimen. And this one here, at least now, is easier to see. Huh. Yep. Let me check again a couple of... Uh, so, microfilm is a good idea. Yeah. Yep. Um, unprepared slides. I see the letters CSOCL um, amongst others. Would you have any idea what these means? CIA. 
So there is a question here: What do those uh, what those what do those uh, abbreviations mean? Um, I, I show you over here, at least the ones that I have here, and that's again one of these things that I would have kind of preferred if it were explained somewhere. <clears throat> so WM means whole mount, okay. Um, yeah, so basically the whole specimen um, is, is kind of placed on here. Um, then LS, I think, uh, means longitudinal section. And CS means cross section and simply sec, I don't know what it means section, I guess. Yeah? But CS means cross section, LS probably longitudinal section. So you've got a, a cross section, CS, sec, I have no idea section, longitudinal section, lengthwise, and WM for whole mount. So, um, yeah, this kind of uh, uh, seems to be the, the most common abbreviations here. I don't see any other one here. Yeah, and here there are two, yeah, cross section, longitudinal section and cross section. And now I took them all out and I don't know how to put them back in. <laughs> I'll do this later. <laughs> So this uh, is uh, basically the, the description um, 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 of the slides. Let me quickly go again. I, I, I lost. I lost the place where I stopped. Ah, yeah, it's here. It's explained again. Thank you. Somebody explained it. Okay. Um, yes, I made my own sub too. So they're talking about Discord. So in conclusion, are cheap slides or expensive slides better? Um, hmm. I, I cannot say that uh, because sometimes even the more expensive slides, some of them were not really nicely prepared either. And I would say that is my personal view is you just make yourself a slide collection over time and uh, there is always something useful. Um, and you basically will have your own favorite slides that you always always keep on going back to. I mean, I have a, a whole bunch of in the, in the more expensive light boxes that I have here. Um, um, there are some of them that I say, nah, they're not so good either. Uh, but at least uh, you have a demonstration material yeah, um, available, um, and some some of them are really nice. So um, I I would say um, the reason why I bought those cheap ones is is uh, for the very simple reason because I wanted to see how good are they, obviously. And I found out that some of them are, yeah, usable. Just to show something, right? Um, but uh, then again, it depends what you want to do. I mean, um, if you just want to kind of uh, show them to, to, to some folks that are interested in microscopy and you just want to give them to, to a couple of kids and you don't have to be worried um, about, uh, um, um, yeah, about them hurting themselves, then why not? Yeah. Uh, and uh, if uh, I think uh, the point is is that um, especially people who are maybe new to microscopy, you just want to have a lot of things to look at, right? And and uh, then you're not so much concerned about the the, the air bubbles beneath the tape, yeah, and things so on. You just uh, um, so ultimately, I think um, it depends a lot on on kind of weird for me to say that also a little bit on the enjoyment of simply uh, yeah looking around. And and I've seen now specimens, for example, um, that I've not seen before. Um, so, ah, here, here we go. What does it say? A goldfish scale. The scale of a goldfish. Okay. Yeah, so be it. <laughs> yeah. Ah, yeah, again, we were able to see a little bit this, this striped pattern yeah, that we, could, we were also able to see before. Yeah, yeah I'd say stick to glass. <laughs> yes. I have some plastic ones that came with a microscope, some are okay, but largely they're poor. Yeah, um, yeah, but um, yeah. So let me go down here. Glad you reviewed the slide set to allow us make informed decision for its purchase. Maybe we can do slide comparisons between brands, manufacturers next time. It will help many others. Yeah, that's possible. Um, uh, what I kind of would like to uh, also look at, but uh, and I looked a little bit on eBay. Um, I'd like to get. Um, I've got. I'd like to get a couple of really antique slides. We're talking here about uh, 1900. I don't know, 100 years ago, 150 years ago, the Victorian slides, um, especially in the UK and Great Britain. And during the Victorian time, apparently there were a lot of um, yeah, well-known slide micro microscopy slide makers because at that time, microscopy hobby microscopy was among some people quite popular. Um, so essentially, uh, what I read somewhere is that many households actually had 
a, a microscope with microscope slides there because people were just looking at them it's as a form of a curiosity not to do fancy scientific research or anything but just for, to have for some fun of it you know um, uh, so it was apparently that many educated households had those they could afford it and they had a microscope a telescope maybe a microscope simply to, to look at things you know to um, so and, and from that time apparently there are kind of nice microscope slides around but again as I said before some of them seem to be collectors items and, and quite expensive yeah but it would be kind of nice to look at those um, as well and another idea that I had uh, but um, honestly um, this is then a little bit uh, um, another thing is this uh, I, I know that there is uh, there are websites called book crossing where you can basically if you have read a book and you just somebody else wants to read the book or without buying it you just send it around you kind of exchange addresses yeah and you can kind of send around the books uh, uh, I was kind of think uh, thinking also a slide crossing maybe I don't know if some people are good in making certain slides and then you could I don't know distribute them and I, I send you five slides you send me five slides and, and something like that I don't know yeah um, so the endless there, there are endless possibilities but of course then you need some kind of a, a website or a platform and it has to be programmed and then people could I don't know trade slides maybe yeah? um, and if uh, some people are specialized in making certain slides then why not uh, um, and, yeah in, uh, encourage you maybe to 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 spread them and send them around and maybe you can get slides from other people who are specialized in making different slides I don't know yeah so um, these are just some ideas that I had okay um, yeah I'd like the idea of a QR code if you if not just to validate your research is correct I'd spend hours trying him to ID quitters yep okay yeah okay I'll go down again a little bit here wow the, the, the number of comments is really nice there's so many of them the box uh, of your Amazon slides that appears to have higher quality than the slides themselves. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah uh, let's put it this way. Um, I, I like, I like, uh, I like the wooden box. Uh, th that's correct. Um, uh, in, indeed, in, indeed, I was a little bit uh, uh, these slides here. Um, compared to to um, we, uh, the other slides that I have in the other boxes, is that the slides here, the quality of the, of the manufacturing quality actually is is fine. Okay, there is a nice label on here, the the yeah, a nice round uh, cover glass here. Um, but I feel that um, into according to my taste, some of them were cut a little bit very thin. Okay, um, and uh, this basically means that there is, is less depth there, there is less color contrast there. And the others that I have in the other box are sometimes cut a little bit thicker and therefore you, you see it a little bit, um, some of them a little bit better. Okay, but it depends really very much on the individual slide. Okay, but, but why not, uh, maybe, maybe I can demonstrate this somewhere. Uh, let me have a look at, 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 at pine leaf. I don't know about this one here. This might not be such a sunflower stem. Let's have a look at this one here, the sunflower stem. Okay, um, let me take the blue one away again. So, and I'm going to show you now. Here, this is the, let me see, um, microscope view. I need to, a little to, uh, let me find this. I have to, just a second, I gotta find it first. Oh yeah, here it is, See, it's completely out of focus. And I need to kind of find the focus, here it is, okay? So it's the stem of a sunflower, okay? Looks, looks kind of nice. Yeah, I, I swing out the condenser here, I remove the, the DIC. Yeah, there's a little bit of dirt and dust there, and it looks, otherwise it looks kind of fine. Let's go up a little bit with the magnification. I'm gonna show you um, the other sunflower um, stem uh, from the other company. Yeah, you see this nice arrangement, you see the individual cells. So yeah, it's a, use, it's a usable slide, right? Okay, but I think it was cut very thinly. Okay, so I'm going to show you now um, the other one. Uh, which was not cut quite as thin and uh, that's actually the other one it's actually one of my favorite slides uh, I need to just show I need to find it again because I cut off give me give me a little bit give me a minute time where I because I don't even know in which box it is and I 
coin. So, we're gonna. Okay, no, 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 just a second. Just give me a second. Bin in the world. Wood, wood, cucumber, pine. Maybe I didn't put it in here. Maybe I do check the other one. But just remember a little bit how it looks like here. No, I'm, I'm gonna find it, don't worry. Come on, man, sunflower, sonnenblume, where, where is it? Sonnenblume, okay, here, here it is, number 20, number 20, that, that's it, okay? Here, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it, and uh, so this one is the, um, from the 19, I don't know, 80s, 70s, 80s, slide, the one that we're using in school, just want to show you uh, this one here um, as well, so it's exactly the uh, the same one okay uh, not to say with the, the same plant yeah so let's uh, put this one in here and uh, i'm going to show you now i'm just going to move over so remember how this uh, looks like let's go 10 times okay so remember how this looks like okay and i'm going to now move over and this one is has been cut a little bit thicker and i think you don't see a significant difference here right there is simply more ah, stuff there, right? Material there. Um, and I think it's not only the staining that has an effect. It's, it's simply a little bit, uh, yeah, you can actually see the thickness of, of uh, the cell walls better. Yeah. So preparation does matter. And you see the thickness as well, because if you zoom in more, let's go 40 times, go up with the light, right? Um, and when you zoom, yeah, uh, not zoom, when you focus, you can actually see that um, yeah, the, the cells have a little bit of depth and there's a little bit of overlap of the cells, right? Yeah. And in the other case, just move over, yeah? Here, that's the other one, yeah? You see there is, uh, yeah, it immediately goes out of focus and then because it's so thin, yeah? Exactly the same plant, yeah, but uh, uh, actually, I think a, a very nice demonstration that prep preparation does uh, does matter. Okay, so let's again go down a little bit here with the brightness. Yeah, here that's yeah. one sunflower, and that's the other one. Okay, yeah. you can also see a little bit uh, here. This in the center, the fact that there is this a uh, hole in the center is uh, probably because during the microtoming process it was uh, probably cut away yeah so you see that this might have been also a sign that it was cut very thinly yeah too thin and that's why there maybe the center kind of broke off yeah um so this just wanted to to demonstrate this um is there a hydra slide in the amp scope box i think i have the same one i have a hydra slide into my other one over there not here. The plants here, human blood, dog, pig, rabbit, rabbit, dog, dense connective, house bee, house bee, hydra, yes, 24, hydra. Here it is, here's the hydra slide. Okay, longitudinal section. So let me take this out again here. Let's have a look at the hydra. If I, if I, here it is, here's the hydra. Okay, so that is the hydra. Okay, but because you were, we, we are comparing slides now, okay? So this is, uh, again, one that's cut very thinly and I have another Hydra somewhere. Let me check, please. Süßwasserpolyp. Ha, here it is, Hydra. It's, it's labeled in German, you know, for this reason, yeah. So this here is, uh, I can also show you. So let, uh, let's, uh, I'll exchange the slides again here. So this one, um, again, is the Hydra from the one from Amazon. And uh, next to it is the Hydra from the other commercial one. So that's the, the one that was cut very thin. 
and here this is the one that which is a hole mount let me focus this that's the foot and here you see the tentacles again what you it depends what you want I mean here um, this one seems to be a complete hole mount to just put the whole animal on, on here and uh, on the other slide here and I think that's uh, this was actually the point why they've done that is is because you make a cross section if I find it again here it is you actually are able to show maybe much better that the hydra inside is hollow yeah so uh, so it really depends what you actually want to show okay because you see that the inside here uh, it, that's kind of where the stomach is it's kind of it, it's hollow yeah and if this is what you want to show then you have to make a very thin cut so that's again the foot here and that's whatever is left over of the tentacles yeah. and that's the mouth so, um, so what is better? Well, I mean, the other slide looks nicer, but if if kind of the 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 the, the cellular structure is maybe more relevant, yeah, or the yeah, then you're able to see the individual cells and the layers um, here much better. If this is what you want to 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 show, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. Ah, uh, interesting. I lost a bit on some antique ones. They looked amazingly lovely, old box and handwritten. Okay, yeah. Were there any slides prepared in the uh, 1700s, 1850s during the little ice age? Well, I don't know about that. I mean, 1700s would be a little bit early because uh, at that time, this guy here, Anthony van Leeuwenhoek, 1723 and he did not make any slides at that time he simply put the object directly on his microscope okay uh, maybe you uh, here we're celebrating 300 years of, of microscopy okay so and um, yeah he basically um, on his little microscope he simply put the sample directly but he did not um, he did not uh, make any slides oh my gosh I overlooked the time it's already one hour 46 minutes heaven's sake I totally lost my perception of time so what I'm gonna do now is I'm quickly going to go through the comments if there are any remaining questions that some of you might have okay um, can you make an episode focusing on mold and bacteria found around the house uh, like the pink stuff that grows in the shower okay um, honestly uh, if you go um, yeah in your uh, drain and you get some of the slimy stuff plenty of bacteria there um, I will why not thank you for the court recommendation okay and uh, the commercial made slides are way better than the ones sold and yeah okay <laughs> so I would say it depends quite a bit on on the company on the importer and of course on, on, on the price you you get cheap ones and then they're maybe not so good and more expensive ones and then they're better right uh, okay, uh, we've had so much fun today and that's why the time just flies, yes. Okay, people, I'm going to interrupt myself now, honestly, uh, because uh, I'm get, becoming tired and you guys are probably also, you folks are also probably becoming tired. Um, hope it was interesting. It was interesting for me uh, because I, for me it was the first time that I'm looking at, I've, been, I've seen those. Uh, and yeah, um, and um, I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, and uh, yeah, where does the filter go in the condenser? Where does the filter go in the condenser? Check if your condenser has a swing out filter holder all the way on the bottom. Last comment, okay, yeah, okay. Um, and uh, if, maybe you're, you're able to put a filter in there. Okay, people, thank you again for, for having joined the, the live stream. I hope to see you again next week. Um, yeah, um, I'll think about uh, again a topic um, and uh, wish you all the best. Uh, happy micro hunting as also. Yeah, last announcement. Um, um, in this channel here, um, I'm making now also YouTube Shorts, okay? Uh, which and there is no automatic notification, but uh, if you go into Shorts uh, occasionally, if you're interested in seeing some 30-second Shorts from me, you can also watch those. Bye-bye, everyone, and uh, have a nice weekend.